Hello, um, beautiful souls. What's going on? I want to come to you with a quick video. I was reading this article about pretty much the hands, foot, and mouth. As it is a hands, hands, feet, and mouth disease. Yeah, hands, feet, and mouth disease. Pretty much, it's it's picking back up. I remember when my baby brother got it. So kind of when I saw the article, it made me want to talk about it. So I want to chop it up with the parents. What's going on, y'all? Let's let your soul speak. Coming to you with another fatherhood video. Want to chop it up to you about keeping your baby safe, you know, making sure they got their vaccines. Want to read this article real quick with y'all. It's real short, but it pretty much just says um, pediatricians at the Ascension Medical Group are reporting an increase in cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease and mononeuroculosis. Is that how you say it? Mono, mononeuroculosis? I was like, hopefully I didn't butcher it. <laughs> Nerco, <nerco-liosis. laughs> Among children in my area, I'm not going to say what area it is, so then I can keep my face on the video. Hands, foot, and mouth disease and mono are highly contagious, and they are often spread through the close contact of sharing drinks, uh, utensils, and other personal items. Hands, mouth, and hands, mouth, and foot disease mainly affects children under the age of five, causing fever, sores in the mouth, and a rash on the hands and feet. Mono is more common in adolescents, young adults with the uh, symptoms of fever, sore throat, and fatigueness. Via Christie pediatrician and Siri said, not Siri like phone Siri, uh, with July 4th gathering, uh, gatherings approaching, it's important that families practice good hand washing and food handling and, uh, uh, at picnics and cookouts. If your child becomes ill, Dr. Siri said, families should check with their health care providers if fevers last more than five days and lack the energy and, and uh, or a lack of energy that lasts more than two weeks without improvement. My brother ended up getting that disease and he was a bit older when he got it, like 12 or 13, like, uh, like 11, 12. So I can understand how, I understand how, how fast it can be, how painful it is. Interestingly enough, my bro- I think my brother played basketball he played like a full tournament with his, I think that's just because he wanted to play. Um, I did everything that I could to keep him like safe and prepared, but I, he wanted to go and he had the energy. So he was able to play and he ended up getting better while we were there. So all the symptoms didn't hit him. But if I'm not mistaken, I think a form of, I think one of my, one of my babies caught like a form of, of mono. It's a lot of different nasty diseases that our babies have vaccines for that we have to make sure that they have vaccines for and if you don't if you don't think about it if you don't if you don't do the research on it you might be putting your babies in a daycare too early or having them around souls that they don't need to be around because either those people don't have their vaccines or your baby isn't even old enough to fight off what the adult immune system can you know what i mean so it kind of worries me now because I'm dealing with uh, I'm dealing with something that's more serious. I don't know if I'll ever like directly talk about it, but you got to be the one to protect your kids. You can't think that somebody else is going to do the necessary steps to make sure that your children are protected. So that's why like I changed my I changed my points of views when it comes to like daycare. Don't put your daycare unless they're if you can if you can keep your children at home and not put them in daycare until they're one i would highly advise it just because of the sicknesses and the illnesses that your child can get from not having their vaccines that's different if your child is like if your child is going on a 10 months 11 months and they and they get and they got all the the serious vaccines uh then of course you know use your caution there's still some there's still some things that i would rather my daycare have and i'll probably make another video on that specifically that I'm going that I'm going to be going off of now, you know what I mean? So but as far as like before, like I didn't know. So now with one of my kids being sick and the the, the extremes of it, it kind of made me want to do more research and kind of understand what's really going on. Like a lot of people didn't know that your meningitis, like meningitis can be caught at any time in a baby's life, right? The vaccine for meningitis isn't given to your child until after 10 months, until their 10 month checkup, nine month or 10 month checkup. So if you're thinking, oh, let me put my baby in daycare at five months, 
probably not the smartest idea, even though you really need to, even though, you know what I'm saying, you got to see if you can find some different help or find, you know, or find a certified nanny that's uh, that has their vaccines and is up to date with all their stuff. Because what I noticed is there's adults that may not even have these vaccines. You know what I mean? Like some of, like, I don't have the specifics of what is required at a daycare, but I know people who have worked at daycares. They don't have to take it. They don't have to, like the vaccines that they take. It can be, you know what I'm saying? They, I, I've seen individuals or I've known of individuals that didn't have certain vaccines that they worked at a daycare or worked at a school and there's certain vaccines that they should have had. Like I work at a hospital, so of course they, they made sure I had, I had to take four or five shots. Matter of fact, what's today? The fifth, I got another vaccine that I got to go do the second dosage of in two days. So it's all over the place. You know what I mean? You just got to make sure now that you keeping your health up, trying to figure out what's the best for the immune system and making sure it's in your kids early enough to where, you know, you feel safe about having your kids around certain strangers or at least waiting until they're old enough so their immune system can, can protect them itself. But yeah, so I haven't made a video in a while. I wanted to see how it came out, chop it up with y'all. I got a lot more content to work on. I've just been kind of slow rolling it, trying to get my thought processes together because I got a lot of great ideas coming out for y'all. So protect your babies. Don't put them in daycare too early without their vaccines. If you like the info that I said in this video, give me a like, comment, subscribe. If you want to have a conversation about it, leave a comment. And let's have a discussion about it. You know what I mean? Let's chop it up, you know, about some about some parenting, about that fatherly stuff. So that'll be it for now. I'll chop it up with y'all pretty soon. I'm out.